Hi guys, and welcome to TechFurb. Um, for some of you, might be the first time you've actually seen my videos, so you know, get subscribed. I do some awesome content, you'll love it. Um, most important, we're doing a Ryzen build today, um, and this is absolutely something that I've been looking forward to since the day Zen was announced in, what, 2014, um, and I finally have one. So, let's put this baby together. Alright guys, so you're probably wondering what parts am I using in this build. Well, uh, for CPU we are running a Ryzen 7 1700. Uh, for the motherboard that will be sitting in, it'll be a MSI Morda B350M uh, Micro ATX board. Um, for RAM we're going to run Corsair's Vengeance LPX 266MHz 32GB uh, kit, which is two 16GB DIMMs. Uh, for storage we are running a crucial MX300 275GB drive, uh, which will be complemented with a 3TB hard drive to make up for the lack of space. Uh, for graphics card, we are running the Asus Strix RX480. Um, it was actually not my first choice of card, but it was the best RX480 available because they are going out of stock in preparation for the RX500 series that is coming out soon. So, spoiler alert if you didn't know that was happening. For the cooler, I'm going with a temporary solution, temporary being I'm not sure how long, um, but it will be a Corsair H60 uh, water cooler uh, that I'll put on. I'll actually do a lot of the testing initially with the stock cooler because I know a lot of you guys might not want to run, say, a H60 um, or just any sort of custom cooler. Uh, for power supply, we're running a 750 watt thermal tape gen, uh, light power Gen 2. Um, for a monitor, we're going with a 21 inch, uh, sorry, 25 inch ultra wide, so uh, 2560 by 1080 res. So that'll be interesting to see how the system handles gaming at that resolution. Um, we've also got a Wi-Fi card, new headset. Uh, we're going with Fractal R3 fans, and that is the sum of the parts of the system. So let's go ahead and build this one, guys.
Alright guys, so build's finished and all the new setup is finished as well. So the new desk is in, uh, I'm on my new chair, I've got the ultra wide in, and there is my beautiful Ryzen PC right there on display. Um, so I haven't actually turned that Ryzen system on yet, so I feel like we should go and do that now. So I'm going to change the camera angle, put it somewhere about here, and we will turn on the Ryzen for the first time. Alright guys, uh, moment of truth, let's see if it turns on. Hey, look at that, we've got power. Alright guys, so that's set up now. So what we're going to do from here is I've got to go into the BIOS, set up all the configs and that. Uh, and then from there we'll load on Windows, get on the programs and all that sort of stuff. And finally, uh, we will run the benchmarks which you guys have all been waiting for. So I can't wait to get into it guys. Alright guys, so at this point uh, the race cooler has pretty much achieved everything that I wanted it to. Um, however, I need to do some overclocking now to finish these benchmark results. So we're going to need to pop this guy in uh, and I won't waste your time with an unboxing because you've probably seen a million of these things on other videos before. Uh, so I'll install it, I'll achieve the maximum overclock that I can and then we will roll on to the benchmarks. Alright guys, so it's finally benchmark time. And uh, just to quickly cover off the overclock, um, I was able to achieve, to achieve 3.7 gigahertz uh, as a stable, um, and it doesn't really influence the gaming benchmarks much, but it did influence uh, the tests such as Cinebench, which I'll show at the end of the benchmark segment. So, uh, first game off the rank was Doom at 2560 by 1080 ultra wide. Uh, all the settings were maxed with this game, and the methodology I'm using is the 1% and 0.1% low method so uh, in the graph here you'll see the average was 62 and the 1% and 0.1% was also uh, around 49 to 46 as you can see in the graph. Now to put this into how it felt terms um, the game is just buttery smooth uh, there's no lag there's no stutters um, it's been a really good experience overall uh, with Doom. Moving on to the next game we have Fallout 4 now this is a game that's always kind of been uh, not consistent in terms of your minimums will always be incredibly low no matter what system you use. Um, I found with testing even i5s or i7s or whatever CPU it is, I've found that Fallout 4 just bottoms out and it has these weird glitches so it's this optimization issues with this game. Now having said that, overall this is the best experience I've had with Fallout 4. Um, I was able to max all the settings at the 1920 by 1080. Now the the limitation there is unfortunately this game doesn't support ultra wide uh, resolutions natively. Um, you can get it to work, but you do need to like hack hack config files and change settings and that sort of stuff, which is something I didn't want to do for testing. It's not ideal. Um, so as you can see here, the overclocks again didn't make a difference. So we were GPU bound. Um, maybe there was a difference with the 0.1% lows, we can see in the graph, uh, but I'd just attribute the 1% and 0.1% lows to the Fallout 4 game engine itself. Um, when I was playing on the map, there was a certain point where I walked and it felt like the, the map hadn't fully loaded from the hard drive or RAM or wherever it was, so there was this uh, short stutter and then the map loaded and then everything was fine. And I must say, every single time I run this benchmark, it's in the same spot where I'm walking. So there's just something weird about this game engine where it's not properly optimized for PC. So moving on to the next benchmark, we have F1 2015. Now this is a game where I've never actually had it run clean. Um, I was always, always limited by the GTX 670 or the processor. Um, I did get good results once on an i5 with the GTX 670, but I've never seen the settings go this high, uh, especially at this high resolution. So. Uh, we did see a slight increase in the averages with the CPU, indicating that this is a slightly CPU-bound game. Um, but overall, even at stock settings on the Ryzen, it was incredibly smooth. Uh, and I have really no complaints about this game. It looks amazing with all the settings maxed, uh, and even in the wet weather benchmark that I run. So that was awesome experience. 
Next we have GTA 5, and overall, again, was a really buttery smooth experience. Uh, the averages, as you can see, were incredibly high. Um, this game was affected by the CPU again, uh, so we did find that with the overclock there was a slight increase in the lows and the average. Now, I also, I will say that on Ryzen this game felt buttery smooth. There was no real stutteriness or any of that sort of thing. There, when I do run, run the benchmarks, there is always a little bit of stutter in some points, but this is the first time I've not experienced that. So that was overall a pretty good result. Um, and again, the resolution is running at the ultra wide 2560 by 1080 and settings were on high and the AA or the MSA settings were on X4. So overall is a pretty good result for GTA 5. Next benchmark, which is Battlefield 1. Now, Battlefield 1 is always a good game that runs quite well on almost any hardware I've found. Um, and here it was no exception. I was able to run the game at my ultra wide settings, so 2560 by 1080 again, uh, and was able to max out the settings at ultra. And as you can see here, the average frames are well over 60, um, and the 1% lows and 0.1% lows are still pretty well up there. And again, as an, exper as an experience, it didn't feel laggy, you know, it felt quite good. Uh, it also doesn't really seem to matter what, whether I've got the processor overclocked or not with this benchmark. So overall pretty happy with Battlefield 1. Um, next was Watch Dogs 2. Now this is the new benchmark uh, I've included. Um, I, I finally got the game to kind of bring me up to standards with the current gen AAA title. And I must say I didn't experience the lag or stutteriness that a lot of people have kind of criticised this game for. I don't know whether it's because I've got, gotten the game after, the, after there's been some optimizations or what it is. Um, but what do, Watch Dogs 2 on Ryzen has been amazing, uh, and that's reflected in the benchmarks here. So average is quite high, and even the 0.1% lows and 1% lows were still above that kind of 30 FPS range, which is what you want. So overall, there was no stutteriness, and it was a great um, experience. Um, I must also say I did have it on the high preset, so I didn't have it on the maximum settings. Maybe that's influencing the benchmarks somewhat. Um, but overall, at the 2560 by 1080 res, it's pretty good to play. Next we have Dirt Rally, and uh, this is a game, again, that just, it, it's fantastic at that 2560 by 1080 res. Um, I had the game sitting at high settings with 8x MSA, uh, but, you know, averagely, it, it, it kind of looked good. There was no stutteriness. Um, and I've kind of found with games like Dirt or F1 2015, you, you really want your minimums to be at least above 30 frames per second. You, you can't have any stutter with these sort of games. It just ruins the experience if there's any stutter. And with Dirt Rally, it was fantastic on the Ryzen processor, so I was quite pleased with that. Uh, it also seems to have been affected slightly by the overclock, indicating that it is a CPU-bound game, which is um, good to see that Ryzen holds up well in that. Next we have Synthetics and uh, Unigen Valley, as you can see here, there's no difference in the overclock. Um, and I've always found this benchmark to always be GPU bound. Unless you have a really, really old processor, it's generally not affected by it. So Cinebench was up next. This is where we started to see the overclock really stretch its legs. Uh, we saw the CPU get 1602 with the overclock. And with the stock setting, it was only 1373. So a bit of a margin there. And overall with like rendering tasks and that sort of stuff, that's where you're really going to start to see the performance difference in the overclock. Finally, we have the Ryzen Blender benchmark, and uh, this is probably the most appropriate to processor, as this is what they used in all the tech demos. Um, and at stock settings, it did pretty well. 41 seconds was pretty good, and then with the overclock, it got to 34 seconds. A bit of a difference that 8-core makes with the just pure CPU rendering. So let's roll on to the conclusion, guys. All right, guys, so conclusion time. Uh, overall, I'm pretty pleased with how the system's gone. Um, I did have difficulties with the overclocking side with the B350 motherboard, um, but I was still able to hit 3.7 gigahertz and was quite happy with that on a, obviously, 8-core 16-thread processor. Uh, in terms of the gaming performance, um, I know Ryzen's copped a lot of flack about its gaming performance, but for me, I was pretty pleased with the experience. I did not feel that I needed more processing power for my gaming. It was, it was perfectly fine, especially running a 60 hertz uh, display. Um, it was fantastic. So. No complaints. Uh, in terms of the workstation side, I was able to run uh, multiple applications at the same time. So I was able to encode two videos at the same time while gaming, 
while also running YouTube. So it has a very, very large amount of capacity to handle a lot of applications at the same time, which is just fantastic, especially for the price point. You're not going to get anything in that price bracket that can do what this processor does. So uh, overall, yeah, in terms of recommendations, I would recommend this for, again, content creators or people that can use 8 cores. Uh, it's not going to be ideal for just your average gamer or your average user because they're not going to use the 8 cores. Uh, that would be they would be much suited, better suited on a Ryzen 5 or an i5 processor. That's kind of my impressions of the platform overall. So thanks for watching guys. Give this one a like if you liked it. Give it a dislike if you disliked it. Leave a comment down the bottom if you have any criticism or feedback or uh, any suggestions for a video I can do with Ryzen. Uh, and yeah, overall, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.